I'm Chris Schilling. I'm an independent pharmaceutical industry consultant. Uh, I work with various companies and also with the European Industrial Research Management Association. It's the European body that's just celebrated its 50th anniversary uh, in, in helping the industry um, meet the challenges of society. Okay, great. So what are your ideas about uh, improving today's healthcare system? From a, a policy perspective, um, the, the big challenges are the big challenges of society, the aging population, and particularly access to, to resources, being able to afford healthcare, because it's one of the major expenditures for every country in Europe, um, but people don't have equal access to, to the finances to look after them. So how do we provide an environment where everybody has good access to health? I see. So what actions can you take in order to improve this situation? <coughs> For part of what I do, the, the, the world of the policy development, mm -hmm. um, there are several pieces of that. Um, the biggest one is moving from treatment to prevention. I was at the European Health Parliament a few weeks ago, the last meeting of the 2016 cycle, mm -hmm. um, and the recommendations there included a real try, trying to focus much more on prevention rather than just treatment. Um, and the statistic that's used is that 97% of healthcare budgets are used on treatment rather than prevention. If we could move that, even by 10%, you would dramatically reduce the amount of treatments required because people would be less ill because of changes in lifestyle. Okay. So what practical steps can you take in order to shift more to prevention? That's where meetings like the East Office is uh -huh. an exciting opportunity to have the discussions that are necessary to take practical steps. At a, at a policy level, I think you earlier interviewed a lady called Marlene, who is a patient advocate. So the, the big change for the pharmaceutical industry and for policy makers is to involve patients, the people who have diseases and, and really have to live with the consequences of those diseases, in the research programs, um, in, in whether it's scientific research or social research. To understand how best to manage those diseases, what, what kind of treatments are needed and how to deliver those treatments. And to help people then, in addition, when you're, when you're developing treatments, to, to, to use education to understand what good health care, what good, um, good lifestyle management is, in order to, to reduce the burden of treatment, to, to, to move to that prevention. So there's education on one side but then also educating the researchers and the industrial practitioners, if you will, the people who develop treatments, to understand more about the diseases as opposed to the, the scientific causes of diseases that are living with disease. I see. Uh, how do you collaborate with pharmaceutical companies in this process? That's a, a very big challenge because, and as we've been hearing in the ease of uh, track on foresight, there is a, a reluctance by researchers to involve industry too much mm -hmm. because industry is seen as having a very vested interest that, that it wants to protect the, the, the markets that it has, it wants to present, protect the products it has and healthcare and pharmaceuticals in particular have a very long R&D cycle, 10 years plus, so you can't make the change today and, and tomorrow there's a new medicine that will take years to come. Um, but by having a forum like this where, where many people can come and represent lots of different uh, viewpoints and perspectives, you can start to have a stronger debate and help the pharmaceutical companies to understand where they can have more impact and, and support the overall outcomes that everybody wants to see improvements in healthcare. And that's been noticeable even at this event, having people talk about pharmaceutical companies with patient representatives mm -hmm. uh, to, to be able to provide um, 
a much better input again on, on this is what we want to see as patients and how we do it. The pharmaceutical companies um, need, young researchers need, need um, a much broader view of the, the many different disciplines that are now required in order to bring new medicines to the market. Um, so it also once again this kind of environment where you have so many young researchers who are, are interested in and have new ideas and different ways of doing things. So that pharmaceutical companies become healthcare companies, not just chemistry companies. And you start to see the role of physics, biophysics, as, as much as biochemistry. And different approaches all being combined to achieve better outcomes for, for health overall. You touched earlier the, the issue of the healthcare being affordable for everyone. What are the steps then we can make in this issue? That's a, a, a much bigger challenge that actually is quite difficult for pharmaceutical companies to address on their own because pharmaceutical companies are, on the whole, normal businesses. They're there to make a profit. And how do they balance that? Um, I work with a company called Accesso, which is a, 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 an innovative um, consulting company that helps companies understand the pricing and reimbursement and market access challenges to set realistic prices for medicines that also enable the health authorities, the pricing authorities, reimbursement authorities um, to understand the, the value that a medicine has in society to any therapeutic. So that we get to a value-based discussion, rather than just the price of something. Mm -hmm. We talk much more about the value that, that something brings. And that's in terms of, of the personal clinical outcomes and also the overall society outcomes. Um, and if you think of a, a, the, the current hepatitis treatments that have been launched that, that are real cures, the reason they're so expensive, or seem to be very expensive, is that they solve the problem. And, and when they were launched in America, they were $84,000 for a, a treatment. And in Europe, it's been negotiated to, to different prices in different countries, but much more accessible. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the alternatives at the moment that don't provide a cure, and people will have hundreds of thousands of euros or dollars worth of hospital care, $84,000, the original price, is still very cheap because it's taking away all of this other um, downstream patient care that won't exist. And, and that's the discussion that Accessor and companies like Accessor help broker between pharmaceutical companies and the, the payers, the, the healthcare authorities, so that everybody gets a common understanding of the value. And that's where the patient voice is so important now because patients understand the value much more strongly mm -hmm. than, than payer organisations or health authorities because they have to deal with the overall providing every part of the healthcare service whereas patients understand their own individual treatment. Could these uh, advisor companies maybe involve patients too? Absolutely, that's something <clears throat> it would be wonderful to see and that advisor companies are well placed to do it. Because one of the other issues is, as we talked about earlier, this idea of are pharmaceutical companies and anybody associated with them really independent, or are they just really there to, to push their particular therapies? By working through third parties, independent parties, mm -hmm. so that you bring in patients and bring in academic viewpoints, where particularly in the idea of health economics, that was very strong expertise actually in um, Budapest itself, one of the leading um, academics and, and researchers for health economics in Europe, it's Carlos Zotan, um, he, that's where he's based. Um, but independence gives you the opportunity to bring together people to have strong discussions and really achieve a good understanding of value from everybody's side. Okay, well thank you very much for telling us about this uh, this possible resolution for, uh, for improving health here. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. Thank you.